Okay, let's talk about the OSAT or the Oklahoma subject area test, but we're looking at one specific test in this video, and it is the elementary mathematics specialist uh, exam, and that is field 082. Uh, so it's very specific, and teaching, um, no matter what state you're in, there's very specific teacher certification exams. So uh, there's not just one for elementary, there's not just one for middle school or high school. Sometimes there kind of is, but you really need to know what uh, specific test you need to teach, you know, at the school or job uh, that you want to get into. So we're looking at this particular test, and we're going to do a practice problem on the level of math that you should know uh, to handle this particular OSAT uh, test. So let me go ahead and just first introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I am a middle and high school math teacher, so definitely know what it's like to teach, teach in a classroom, and take uh, certification exams. So um, as a middle and high school math teacher, the exams that I've had to take, um, those are pretty challenging, and I even have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree, and even then, you still need to study. So you have to study for these exams, and um, here, especially with the elementary level um, test, I think... Uh, some people can get thrown off, and I've heard this before with uh, a lot of elementary teachers, and it's no fault of their own. When you hear the word elementary, and you say, well, I'm only going to be teaching elementary level math, or, you know, I'm at that level of K through 5, whatever the case might be, you think, well, I'm not going to have to deal with algebra, geometry, you know, more advanced math, but uh, that's not the case, at least on these certification exams. Many uh, exams, this one in particular, you're going to have to know what I would classify as high school level math okay you're going to have to good you know be really you know strong in like algebra geometry concepts and not just at a general level either you're going to have to you know uh, really brush up on your math skills and if you were weak in high school math or in college math then you're going to want to put some uh, extra effort in to get ready for this test because you don't want to go in and take uh, your exam and fail okay uh, many teachers have to take certification exams multiple times. That's kind of common or normal, I think. <laughs> Not every single teaching candidate or teacher passes every every exam the first time out. So you just don't want to, um, you know, be in that situation if you can avoid it. With that being said, I want to let you know that I have an excellent um, math prep course for the OSAT Elementary um, Math Specialist, Field 082. I'll leave the link to that in the description. But um, we'll talk about that later. What I want to do is... Take a look at this nice little practice problem, and this is something you should definitely be able to handle at uh, um, or be comfortable with at the level of math you're going to have to know for this particular OSAT exam. All right, so what are we talking about here? Well, um, this is the problem. Of course, I'm going to solve it, and it's an algebra problem. I'm not going to give you too many hints because I want you to take a crack at it. So even if you're not sure what to do, okay, you should still think about it, okay? Just think about it for a moment or go ahead and pause the video and actually solve it or tinker around with it, whatever the case might be, because I'm actually going to explain it here in a second. Okay, so let's get to the solution here. So what we have, this is actually a quadratic equation that's been factored, okay? Now, if you remember the quote, Quadratic equations are things that look like something like this, 3x squared minus 10x plus 7 equals 0, something along the this uh, format. And you have this x squared, you have an x, and you have a number. And if you think back to your math days, whether that be in college or in high school for sure, and you wouldn't be taking this exam if you didn't take the math that you already need for this particular OSAT uh, exam. You, in other words, you're going to be a teacher. You've definitely taken algebra, and geometry, etc. So if you recall, to solve a type of equation like this, there's various approaches that we want to do. One of the first things we want to do is see if we can factor it. Okay, And if we can't factor it, we move on to the quadratic formula. And then there's other techniques as well. So in algebra, solving equations is a huge skill you need to know. And I would say uh, for this test, you're going to have to um, know, be able to solve various types of equations, quadratic equations being um, one of those uh, type of equations that you're going to have to solve. <clears throat> okay, so here, for example, if I have this quadratic equation, 
and it's set equal to zero. Again, I don't want to turn this into a full lesson because this, uh, you know, one it wouldn't I wouldn't have enough time to really teach this to you quickly. But uh, just kind of you know trying to brush off any cobwebs in your memories. But anyways, if this is set equal to zero, I can factor this hopefully, and that's always the easiest thing to do. Of course, that's assuming you know how to factor polynomials. All right, so let's get back to our situation here. And I kind of give, uh, again, to give you a problem, it's nice and easy. So I have one factor here, one binomial we call this, and it's being multiplied by another binomial. Now, if I multiply these together, I would end up with something like this over here. Okay, now we're not gonna do that for this particular problem because that's not necessary, right? So this is your problem on your test. You don't need to look at the original problem. You just need to look at the factors. And the most important part of this problem is you see that this is equal to zero, all right? So what we have here is one thing, something, okay, this quantity being multiplied by this quantity. In other words, let's think of it this way. I have something, let's just call that a box, times something else, let's call that a triangle, and that's equal to zero. So what I want you to do is, is just let's just think of this question here for a second. I have something being multiplied by something else, and that's equal to zero. Now think of it this. Let's say I, I'm seeing you on the street, and I say, hey, listen, I have these two numbers, and when I multiply them together, my answer is zero. <laughs> so I would say, hey, I, I, can you tell me what these numbers are? And you would say, okay, the only way you're going to get zero, if you're multiplying two numbers together and you get an answer zero, one of these things has to be zero, right? One or both have to be zero. That's the only way you're going to get a product of zero, okay? This is something called the zero product property, which is a wonderful property in math because it makes our life uh, so much easier. So that's why we want to be able to factor. And when we have this thing uh, set equal to zero, I can say, okay, this thing times this thing is equal to zero. I can set each factor equal to zero, right? So 2x minus 1 is uh, either got to be zero or 3x plus 5 is either got to be zero, okay, or both are zero. Now, one thing about quadratic um, uh, functions or quadratic equations is that there will always have two solutions, two solutions. Now, those solutions can be what we call real numbers and or complex or imaginary numbers. Now, this is getting kind of a little bit more advanced. Okay, I could spend a lot of time talking about this, but you're always going to have two solutions when you're dealing with quadratic equations, all right? Not just one. All right, now here, now that we know this, all I have to do is solve these respective uh, equations here, nice and easy equations. So if you couldn't set up the problem, if you didn't know what to do here in this case, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can solve these two little basic equations here. Okay, so hopefully you were able to solve these two little simpler equations. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and add 1 to both sides. I get 2x is equal to 1. I'm going to divide everything by 2. So x is equal to 1 half. That's one solution for this quadratic equation. It's going to solve for this one. Subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. I get 3x is equal to negative 5. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I get x is equal to negative 5 thirds. Okay, so these two right here are my solution to this quadratic equation that has been factored for me. Okay, all right, so again, in mathematics, um, often what looks easy or what can be easy is totally dependent upon your understanding of the subject, <laughs> right? So hopefully you didn't multiply this together and you were doing, let's say you used a quadratic uh, formula, uh, but you multiplied this together and you actually did that and you solved it. That's pretty awesome. I congratulate you uh, on that. However, that was, you know, kind of going the long route where this is the most direct route. But this is just one example of one subtopic of algebra, of solving equations. There's many, many more other topics that you're going to have to know uh, for the level of math that's going to be on the OSAT elementary math specialist, okay? Again, don't let that word elementary uh, fool you. Um, 
in terms, yes, are you going to be teaching this to third graders? No. Okay. But are you going to need to know this for your uh, test? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. So if you're still with me up to this point, I certainly appreciate it. Um, I've been on YouTube for many, many years, have hundreds and hundreds of videos. I'm posting all the time. So well, if you like my videos, you like my content, um, please consider subscribing. I actually have hundreds again on my channel that can help you prepare for uh, this particular OSAT exam. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, are you just starting to teach? Are you uh, kind of making a career switch? You know, for example, I started off in high school math and I thought, hey, maybe middle school math would be different or easier. Um, I went to middle school and it was actually more challenging. So don't let the level I think I think sometimes high school teachers in particular, although I love high school teachers, they might say, oh, the elementary school teachers, they don't they don't work as hard as us because we have the older kids. And listen, all teachers work, uh, you know, it's it's all challenging across the board from preschool to teaching seniors. OK, so um, and only those of us that teach truly understand what it's like to be a teacher. And I commend you on, you know, your career path. It's challenging, but at the same token, uh, it's rewarding, okay? So um, hopefully, you know, I can help you out with these videos. Again, I'm gonna leave the link to my uh, OSAT math prep course. Very comprehensive, it's taken me years to build uh, the material on my all my courses. So again, that might be something that you might be interested in checking out. But with that being said, I wish you all the best and have a great day.